Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to look at the most recent 556 buff that BSG have put through, this time on Weapon Recoil. As a reminder of what this actually means, the numbers that are referred to here are the base recoils for each weapon, which is if you take the gun and remove all of the attachments. For example, the AK-101 here, we open up the preset, we remove all the attachments and you'll see the number of 125 stated. Beforehand, this would have been 132. The guns that have been buffed here are the AK-101 and the 102, the HK-416 and the M4, the SCAR-L and the G36, and then the two semi-auto rifles, the ADAR and the TX-15. I'm not going to focus too much on the ADAR and the TX, and for some reason the 556 MDR was the only weapon in this caliber that did not get a buff at all. Perhaps this is because the base recoil is already 87, but the reason for this is that the stock is intrinsic to the gun, so it already comes with the improvements that a stock would give you without it being a part independently on its own. For the rest of them, we're seeing a 7 to 9 base recoil point improvement across the board, which more practically speaking takes the best in slot recoil builds down by a couple of points too, depending on the weapon. It's also good to remind ourselves of the fire rates of these guns because it has a big impact on the full auto spray. So in this table I've summarised the recoil change, the points improvement that this has made from the base, the RPM of our guns and the change that this has made to the best in slot for vertical recoil builds for each weapon. The final number here represents the total recoil reduction of all the mods in the best configuration. As you can see the M4 usually leads the pack with only an 18.7% of the base recoil remaining if you attach all the best mods that you possibly can. I've done a few preliminary examples of how the recoil looks now for some of these best in slot, starting with the SCAR L which has gone from 50 best to 47. This requires the Silencer Co Suppressor, which it does on pretty much all the other guns too, and the RK2 attached to an MREX rail. Nothing else really changes here, and we knew that the SCAR was kind of the king of 556 recoil back in 1212, on a budget anyway, partly due to its amazing horizontal recoil, but then the round fell out of favour quite quickly, which put it on the back seat a bit in terms of usage. We can see from testing it out that it still performs pretty well. Clearly you can use a different vertical foregrip because the RK2 only removes three recoils say versus the AFG M-Lock style attachments, but I just put it on there for comparison's sake. Most of the heavy lifting in terms of recoil improvements comes from the Seiko Suppressor, which is very typical of 556 weapons, as we get 9% from the Compensator and 14% from the Suppressor, which together takes 23% of the base recoil off, i.e. it contributes towards 33 points of reduction on the SCAR by itself. As for the AK-101, this has the same fire rate as the scar L, but can be modded to a lower recoil due to the AK style attachments. I used a slightly different version that gets the 39 recoil instead of the ultimate 37 because this requires a Troy QARS rail which I don't have access to yet. But as you might guess, 2 recoil doesn't make much difference and this performs quite similarly to the scar, albeit with slightly worse horizontal. I think the AK-101 could be a nice contender for a solid mid-game weapon once you reach M856A1 through Peacekeeper, as this round is very decent on penetration and has very good damage too for an intermediate cartridge, with the cheapness of modding for an AK style weapon, but then the ability to attach a wide variety of 556 muzzles. Pretty cool. Next up is the AK-102. This gun has always been in a bit of a funny spot because it has a lower fire rate than the AK-101 at 600 rather than 650. It doesn't get to the same recoil as the 101 either, and it has a little more ergo, but these two weapons don't really struggle for ergo that much. You would think that the lower fire rate would help with the recoil profile, but ultimately the build at its new best recoil of 40 looks almost identical to the 101 at 38. Personally, I'd take the faster time to kill over a few fringe points of ergo any day. In regards to the M4, which is usually the weapon that is in the spotlight because of its prolific past in EFT, this pushes the best in slot build down from 28 recoil to 26. This is not going to change too much at the top and the bottom end I don't think, but some of those mid-range builds with 50-ish recoil could now feel just that bit better to make people want to take them out. I threw this one together for the video, which results in 43 recoil, which isn't bad for an M4 without the advanced tube, without the better upper or one of the longer barrels. In true Gigabeef style, this is an ADAR conversion, i.e. you take the lower from Mechanic 2, you buy an ADAR from the fleet and you swap over the parts. 
The initial rise on the M4 is still quite a bit higher than on the other weapons, but it has improved the feel somewhat. I'm going to have to test out some mid-game builds across 5.56 in general to see if these changes have really made a difference practically. The one I didn't bother checking was the HK416 because this has a faster fire rate than the M4, doesn't get as low on recoil and is hard to make a mid-tier budget version. I'm certain it will be very very similar with a slightly worse initial rise because these two guns have always been very close in performance and feel. I did take a look at the G36 though. This is a strange one because the best in slot builds for this gun use the long barrel and the handguard which stops you putting on a foregrip of any kind and instead attaching a bipod. This gives recoil and ergo benefits but without being able to use it in any way because we don't have that ability yet in Tarkov. Putting this one together gets to 46 recoil and the part to really pay attention to is how cheap this is to do relatively speaking. I've used the same suppressor on all the guns so you can change this out to make it more cost effective, for example using the QDC NT4 combo which are two a penny. But other than the suppressor, you just buy the bipod, the top rail and the alternative stock which costs about 25k once you have the trader levels for it. Firing this is very similar to the M4 in outcome, it has a slightly better recoil pattern at 46 recoil than the M4 at 43 which is mostly because of the fire rate difference of 800 versus 750 for the G36, but it is quite a bit cheaper than the equivalent M4, even if you're using the ADAR swap over tricks for it. If you're looking to make some intermediate builds for 556 and don't want to give up on the time to kill compromise in closer battles that you have with the 101, the SCAR and the MDR due to their lower fire rate, then after all the buffs the G36 might finally have a place in the 556 category. We're going to have to test it a bit more to find out. Now I know that the MDR didn't get any buffs but I wanted to showcase this one as well just because it's commonly used, relatively cheap as you don't have to mod it and it comes with decent recoil straight away. This version is the lowest you can physically get to with 55, which isn't really necessary to be honest, but that's when you use the Seika suppressor and an RK2 foregrip. The beauty of the MDR, as we touched on earlier, is that you can use cheap suppressors like the Hybrid 46 for 4 sticks of RAM, and because the MDR's low base recoil means it doesn't benefit much from the suppressor combos, you may as well use one of these rather than the high recoil reduction versions like the Seika. If you haven't seen it yet, go and check out my video explaining the ammo changes next that happened prior to this, as 556 had seen some buffs already on the rounds themselves too, most importantly on 56A1 and 55A1, which are the most used rounds for this caliber. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.